G'day guys, it's been a bit quiet for a while, um, but I'm going to do a video. Uh, the old 75 series, especially with the turbo bolted on, uh, don't like getting hot. Um, and they seem to do it really easy. So what we're going to do with this is we're going to put a full HDJ78 radiator and cooling system set up in it, which is um, radiator fan shroud, uh, splash tray, fan clutch fan, uh, hose kit, uh, and we'll put a thermostat in while we're there. Um, yes, the same radio does come out in the 78, but in the early 78, HZJ, they didn't. They still had the smaller 75 size radiator that had plastic tanks on it. So if we call it a HDJ 78 setup, there's no confusion due to the two radiators in the HZJ 78. So, we'll get started. Next we're going to uh, remove the grill, then we can undo the shroud, get the bottle out, pull that radiator. Now the grill's off, we're going to attack the uh, shroud bolts and uh, pull that out of the way so we can get the radiator out. You may have noticed a sensor in the top hose. This is our uh, aftermarket water temp sensor, just so we can get an idea of actual correct readings. Um, so this will uh, help us with the new radio. Now we're just going to lift the shroud back towards the motor so we can get the radiator out and then we can pull the shroud out after the fact. Radiator's out, it's actually quite clean all the way through, a bit putrid inside. Now we'll get rid of the shroud, get the fan off, hoses on, and keep moving. That's a uh, standard 75 fan clutch. This has actually been installed. All the uh, studs are loose. This is what our next video is about. 
78 fan clutch. Same OD, optical illusion, but it is. Different size. What I like doing with these, is before you put your new stud in, lock tight. Doesn't have to be heaps. Get the lock tight on the thread. Thread them in. This nifty little tool is a thread installer. Comes in a kit. So you've got thread remover and thread installer. Tighten that up. Get your 17 mil spanner, which I didn't prepare. And tighten her up. Actually, probably do it by hand, they're only small, they're only M5. Sorry, M6. And that's how you put your studs in your fan clutch. Alright, so they're all in now. I actually did nip them up with a 17, just to be safe. Fans. This fan's a much larger fan. It's about, about a centimetre OD, I guess. Um, and that'll make a big difference in the new shroud. Fan sits in. Use the old uh, nuts from the old fan clutch to screw her on. Happy days. One thing I did forget to mention is the shaft size on these a chalk and cheese. Completely different shaft size. Gives you an idea. Now we've already unwrapped this because it takes about five minutes to get it out. But these things are a work of art, absolute work of art. Pressed tanks, steel sides, and there's even a little port here for a low coolant alarm or temp sensor or something like that. I'll lay them side by side so we can do a comparison. So here's the comparison. About 100 mil in height. Um, fan size is definitely larger. Shroud size is definitely larger. Fan clutch is definitely larger. And also, we're going to run this little bad boy, which drops the uh, factory splash tray down about 100 mil. Um, so it's all factory, it's all neat, it all bolts straight in. And uh, all parts can be purchased through CMS Direct as a kit, or you can purchase them through Terrain Tamer. Um, us being a Terrain Tamer stockist, we can sell you the same price as Terrain Tamer direct. Okay, so um, the brackets hold the radiator on, one of the studs is broken. Um, we could probably punch it out, put a nut and bolt in there, but it makes it really hard to access. Um, so what we've done is we've gone out and bought a genuine radiator bracket from Terrain Tamer, uh, which we also keep in, in stock. So we're gonna change both of these, um, fit them back up and put the radiator in. Um, you don't have to put new ones on, you can just nut and bolt or whatever you need to do, but it does make it a lot harder to fit. Um, we'll get it going. Okay, so our um, radiator mounts, one of them's had a bit of a doozy. Uh, we could pin it out and uh, put a nut and bolt, but it makes it really hard to fit. Um, so we've got these great little new ones available. Uh, also the old bushes are a bit shagged, so we're gonna replace them with these brand newies. Uh, it'll fit a lot better. All available through us or Terrain Tamer. Um, we're not sponsored by Terrain Tamer at all. Everything we buy is purchased 100%. Um, so yeah, nothing's given to us and everything is done independently. Right, I'm just going to press the uh, the bushes into the radiator and in the bracket. Um, I use a little bit of WD just around the little lens. Just helps them push in. Push in there. To go in. Like so. We can put the washer on the top of the nut, and this side down here. Uh, 
back. So, uh, you could probably do it the other way as well. Uh, I'm sorry for the poor quality of, uh, I'm on my own today, so, uh, but you get the gist of it, it's a very simple and straightforward procedure. Alright, with all that done, all things being equal, this will just drop straight in. There you go. I just need to put the nuts on. Happy days. Before I put the nuts and bolts in, I always like to see how I stand, make a bit of a mess, but saves them sticking in there and being difficult to extract later. Uh, that's personal choice. I don't try and force my views on anyone. It's completely up to you. Unless you're driving this So just to recap, with two nuts, there's a nut there and a bolt there, there's a bolt down there, there's a bolt down there, and there's a nut and bolt up there. <coughs> We've replaced these rubbers here and the ones just down there which go to that bolt down there. Now we'll slip the fan shroud and fan assembly in. We're going to change the lower hose to compensate for the drop. And put top hose on, bottom tray on, and should be right. That's our bottom hose. I'll grab the Grab the new ones and show you how they fit. There's our uh, new bottom hose. So yeah, definitely a significant difference in size. Let's put it on. Well, as you can see, the radiator hangs down significantly lower than the old one, which could potentially uh, be a target for debris, rocks, all that sort of stuff. So we're gonna fit this bad boy here to keep it safe. So, uh, we go all right. Bottom hose is all fitted up now. There we go. Beautiful. Like a factory one. This is gonna be good. Okay, now we've got the uh, shroud and hair clutch time. Sit the shroud in like so. Okay, so we've just sat, sat the shroud in and rested it back out of the way, and we've just gently sat the fan clutch on the hub, 
put all the nuts back on, tighten them up evenly. That should straighten itself out. Uh, then we'll bolt the shroud on and continue on with the next process. All right, fans in. Now we're just gonna bolt the shroud up. You're right. There's two bolts in the top of the shroud and actually slots in at the bottom. So it's a much better option over the early 75 stuff. We've just flushed out our overflow. Still looks a bit crap on the outside, but it's clean on the inside. Mount that up. Uh, three bolts. Fairly straightforward. Everything lines up in this kit. I'm really impressed with how well everything goes together. Bottles in. We'll connect the uh, overflow bottle to the radiator. Top hose on. And ready to uh, see what she does. Now to put the grill back on, put some corn in, and road test. Now at this point in time, terrain tame I don't do a factory foam surround, which I've spoken to them about and they're going to change apparently. Uh, they do do it in the V8s. Uh, so in the meantime I just use this foamy double sided stuff I'd line around, it works well. And the reason for this is so there's a seal between the radiator support and radiator so the air gets drawn through the condenser, not through the air gaps at the top. It's not a factory, but it's pretty good. All right, we've uh, reverse flushed it as per Terrain Tamer's instructions. Uh, I'm normally an advocate for green on these 1HZs, but because we're going for an aluminium radiator, I'm gonna go the, go the red. Um, we've got the back heater hose off down there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna fill it up until we get some sort of flow out of that back hose. And then we'll close it off and that'll eliminate all our air leaks. I don't know how good your fuel is there, but you can just start to come out now. Uh, we'll close it off and get it warming up. Alright, coolant's in. Um, I'm just going to throw in some RMI 25, which is a cooling system treatment uh, from Cost Effective Maintenance. I used to be a bit sceptical on additives and things like that, but uh, I've actually used this in a car and it came back a thousand k's later and it was chock a block full of crap that this thing had just scraped off because it was clean when we flushed it. And then uh, once we put this through and then reflushed it again a thousand k's later, it was just brown. So I'm going to throw some of this in too. Fire up.
G'day legends, uh, just an update on the radiator situation, I know everyone's been keen to find out what's going on, um, took her for a maiden voyage, uh, 25 degree ambient temperature, same temperature I did the other day, uh, it was approximately 25 degrees, um, 120 degrees I got up to. Um, and that was only after about two exits on the Pentland Hills heading towards Ballarat before I turned around and came back. Um, with this set up, 98 was the hottest I got to and that was pushing it, 110 all the way. Um, on the flats, it would hover around the 88 mark and even on the way home, when it got to some of the downhills, it got down back down to 77, which is about thermostat closing range, so it was really good. By the time I got back to the workshop, I could actually touch the bottom of the radiator and it was uh, lukewarm. Uh, I pulled over on the way up and weighed myself. It's uh, 26.50, I think. And the temperature went up, just sitting there idling up to about 93 uh, after about a minute or two idling. Uh, but I'm really happy with the, with the results. Uh, I wasn't sure how good it was going to be. Once it started creeping up towards that 100 mark, I thought, oh, this is going to be a waste of time, but uh, it stopped there and sort of, you know, I'm sure if you pushed it and pushed it and pushed it and pushed it, you, you can get anything to overheat, I guess. Um, now, a bit of background on the motor. This is a 1HZ with an aftermarket turbo. Uh, it does have a CVT. Cowboy tune for all you fellas at Berrimer watching. Um, no, it's a pretty wild tune for, for, for this, but I observe the EGTs all the time and all that sort of stuff, so boost was anywhere between 10 and 15 pound the whole way up. Uh, EGTs, 400 to 550. Um, so it'd be pumping out a lot of heat, no intercooler. So I'm really happy with the result. My temperature probe is in the top hose, which is just past the factory temperature sensor. Um, so everything seems to be spot on. If you want some more info on these kits, just inbox me direct. Um, I'm going to be selling them as a kit for the 75 and the early 78s, which run the short radiator. Um, so you can upgrade to the HDJ or the late model HZJ 78 radiator setup. It proves to be a good thing. And hopefully it'll solve a lot of our 75 issues. Cheers, legends.